Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Got another quick project. Uh, this is a 2006 Toyota Prius. This car belongs to my sister. I already done several things on this uh, uh, car. Most recent would be a high voltage uh, battery uh, repair. I will put a link somewhere. Uh, if you're interested, take a look. Uh, today we're gonna work on ABS. Uh, let me show you what's happening. Okay, so as soon as you open the door, usually you get greeted with this wonderful sound and it usually stays on. When you actually start the car, that sound actually comes back on and stays on constantly. Right now I cleared code and for that reason uh, this uh, sound doesn't come on um, constantly. It just comes on and then goes off. It will come on in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, you get a brake light, ABS, uh, uh, vehicle stability I guess. Uh, uh, and don't pay attention to tire pressure or check engine. I believe that's uh, something else. But those first uh, three yellow lights are the ones uh, that uh, is actually concerns us right now so uh, when I scanned this uh, system ABS system I was actually getting a little bit more codes than you you see right now but I believe uh, well I cleared the codes and uh, rescanned it after driving it for about a mile uh, this code came back and I believe this is the main problem code uh, but there were like one or two more um, before and I was hoping to save it and I didn't but anyway so this is the main problem right there C1256 and you can hopefully hear that the ABS pump is constantly pumping and um, yeah even if you don't touch the brake it's still pumping and in in a minute it's gonna start making well it's already making that weird sound hopefully you can hear it I'm not trying to show you a floor I'm just trying to bring the microphone closer to the <laughs> firewall anyway so I believe that we have an issue in uh, ABS uh, pump a new ABS pump cost over a thousand dollars this car is probably not worth spending that kind of money uh, used pumps are pretty expensive as well uh, surprisingly uh, they're on the average like two three hundred dollars I found locally hundred and seventy dollars from the car that has a hundred and seventy something thousand miles which is not ideal but uh, that's the best deal for the mileage I can get so in this video we are going to replace that pump basically what we're gonna do we're gonna remove these plastics cowl wipers um, we're gonna have to remove this uh, hybrid uh, inverter and we'll get gain an access to an ABS pump which is located right there and uh, uh, we'll replace it with the with another one hopefully we get a good one which will last a few miles this car has uh, close to 300,000 miles so I'm hoping that pump will last, uh, you know, some time. So, uh, first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect the battery. Since we are working with the high voltage, we wanna make sure that the car is drained. We're gonna disconnect the uh, auxiliary battery and we're gonna disconnect the orange plug and uh, we're gonna let it sit for a couple of minutes and we're, we're gonna start working on it. So, let's get to it. Okay guys, so uh, when you work on the Prius, or probably most Toyotas number 10 and number 12 is the must uh, I'm talking about sockets um, we're also gonna need 14 for the viper wipers and uh, this kind of uh, clip remover you can get this from Home Depot this is actually a staple remover I believe but uh, this is really uh, helpful on uh, removing the clips or wiring harness uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky to remove this uh, clips uh, you will have to hold the base of the clip with your finger 
and try uh, turning the Phillips uh, head gently without doing any pressure downwards um, and it will pop up just a little just to give you enough room to pop it with the, this clip remover and then so basically this is what you're gonna do when the clip is all the way in you're gonna hold the base with your fingers and turn this gently and it's gonna come up like that and at that point you can just get your uh, clip remover underneath and pop it up and then it's gonna come out okay the clips on the cowl is a little bit different instead uh, you're gonna push down on the head of the clip and then you you can pick up the panel and it will pop the clip out so it's gonna be in this uh, position and what you're gonna do you're just gonna press on it and it will release and you can pop up the panel and it will pop up and installation you have to push pin out stick it in the hole and push down on the head and it's gonna be uh, secured okay it's a little bit tricky to remove the wiper blades uh, first you're gonna remove the nuts and uh, we're gonna have to close the hood to get to that other nut to remove a uh, wiper arm <clears throat> you actually pick up the arm and what you do you kind of wiggle it back and forth and it comes loose and same thing with this arm pick it up wiggle it and the other one is as well and just like that you can if you can see tabs on the bottom of this clip you can release these tabs if you can't just pry it with your uh, clip remover same thing with this wiring harness. Let's take this uh, fuse box off. Two bolts, number 10. Okay, number 10. If you're gonna have a hard time remembering which bolts are where supposed to go, uh, what you can do, you can keep parts with the bolts uh, apart from other parts. Okay guys, so when you get to this point, you wanna make sure your battery is disconnected and uh, orange plug is uh, unplugged so we are going to have a bunch of number 10s number 12s uh, we're gonna start with this cover we're disconnect we're gonna disconnect this cover because we're gonna have to gain an access to some of the plugs to be able to disconnect them Okay, we're gonna need the uh, number 30 torques. And we are ready to remove with the cover. Okay. There is a yellow connector on the side. We're gonna remove it by pulling on it. We're gonna have to remove these three plugs okay. we are going to remove these orange connectors one and two we are gonna have to 
take this uh, coolant line off and uh, I'm gonna stick a tray underneath to capture all that uh, coolant that is gonna be leaking. There's actually another line uh, right below it that we're gonna have to uh, disconnect. Off just like that um, we'll also we'll have to remove this uh, AC compressor connector okay there is another line right here there you go three number tens inside of the inverter There's actually two retaining bolts right here. Now this connector is out, we're gonna put it aside. And there's two more uh, gray connectors that we need to disconnect. Okay, there's one and the round right below it okay oh there's actually another one there's a black one there's a uh, one connector right here we're gonna take the retaining bolts off and we are actually gonna take the connector bolts off. They are number 10 as well. Okay, so I believe the only bolts that we have left are number 12 bracket bolts. There is one behind and there are two up front. We are good to go as far as inverter. Now that we have inverter off, we have an access to the ABS pump. Let's start with the removing stuff out of the way. Okay, we're gonna need the number 10 wrench for uh, brake lines to... Uh... Okay, now we're gonna remove this uh, rubber hose. So there are three number 12 bolts that hold this uh, whole assembly down to the car. One is right here up front. One is right on the side of the pump. It's actually a nut. And there's one on the other side. Now the tricky part is to pull it out from underneath all of this mess. Okay. Whew. Yeah, it's it's a pain to pull it out without doing more disassembly, like removing pump and stuff. But we did it. Uh, let's see if we can put new one in or well, used one in. Okay guys, so let uh, the pump is in. It's actually, it went in uh, uh, easier than I thought. So the installation is gonna be pretty much uh, in a reverse order. I'm gonna install the mounting bolts and nuts and uh, hook up all lines and all brackets. Okay guys, so we are all done. Uh, the bleeding process was pretty straightforward. Uh, you just follow steps with, on your scanner. And if you don't have a scanner, um, I believe you can buy a software called uh, TechStream. 
uh, with the cable and just uh, download it to your laptop and uh, you can use your laptop uh, as a scanner. Everything is done. Let me show you. So the lights are off except for the tire pressure. Well, let me see. Where's my key? So lights are off, everything works. Uh, uh, you can see it brakes working great. I drove it for the that's for the that's for the open door. Uh, I drove it, it, it drives fine, brakes fine. So uh, problem is fixed, no annoying beeping, no constant uh, ABS pump uh, pumping. So so for those who stayed all the way till the end, uh, I'd like to give you a tip. I made a huge mistake. I was really afraid that it would happen and it did happen. So let me show you. This is an original pump. And uh, on the side of the pump, there are five lines going into this pump. And they're very flexible and you you can easily start them these uh, fittings with your uh, fingers but the top one when i was disconnecting this line uh, i noticed that it, it's it's under the pressure uh, under the tension and i was wrenching all the way out so when i put new pump in and i started uh fitting I, I wasn't able to start it with my fingers, so I started a little bit and then was wrenching. And I didn't realize, I made sure that the fitting is uh, vertical, uh, but I couldn't see this angle. I don't know if you guys can, <laughs> can see this or not. So basically I cross-threaded this fitting and uh, I didn't realize until I started doing bleeding and I, I noticed that uh, this uh, fitting was uh, leaking and it took me forever forever trying to uh, get this uh, trying to get this fitting in the way it was supposed to be straight and uh, I was at the point ready to go and buy a new pump and uh, new line because line from screwing and unscrewing was pretty much uh, uh, done I mean the wrench uh, portion of the fitting but anyway I somehow miraculously I managed to uh, thread it correctly so when you are gonna do this job if this is very important make sure you start all these lines with your fingers all these fittings because when i was unscrewing it as soon as i break it break it loose i was able to unscrew all these lines uh, with my fingers except that top one and uh, when i was starting this top one it was going easy with the with the wrench it was going easy and uh, only at the very end uh, it was it was tight so anyway uh I managed to fix it. I managed to uh, thread it straight, and it's not leaking, and it's and it and works great. So, this is it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that bell notification button, and I'll see you in the next one.